Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on 10 effective ways to monetize your commerce app. My name is Victor Vaz and I'm a business development manager at Royal Cyber. I'll be your host and speaker for today. Along with me, we have Samson Peter. He is our global practice head and is a pioneer of mobile technologies with more than 15 years of service in this industry. He holds a leadership position at Royal Cyber. Alongside, we also have Shiva Yogi, who is our practice head for UI and UX. Shiva has 16 plus years of IT service in the realm of customer and user experience consulting and design management. He too holds a leadership position at Royal Cyber, where he helps businesses to provide positive experiences that boost business success. Now, before we start, if anyone is not able to view my screen, or hear me properly, kindly notify us in the chat window that is located on the right side of the pane. Let's take a look at the agenda for today. So we will be discussing e-commerce and its projections, effective ways for monetization, what customers want when it comes down to e-commerce, case study, that's on Augusta Sportswear, an assessment, and Q&A. So you'll have, a, we'll have an entire Q&A session We'll be, we'll be answering any questions that you guys have. So keep us posted with any questions that come up. Um, you could always ask us questions in the end as well. Use the window that's located on the right side of the pane to post your questions. To get started, this year, as well as the next few years, look highly promising for e-commerce. As experts say, the year 2020 will, be a, will end at approximately 4.3 trillion and by the year 2021, e-commerce will take a market share of 72%. Now, the question is, and the question of this webinar is, how, how much of this amount is your business claiming? And if it's not a big share, then you're at the right place. Since today, we will discuss the ways you can make your app uh, claim bigger chunks of the revenue. And, 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 and it's going to be out of the revenue that we mentioned before. Now, we'll also be offering a free assessment to those everyone who's attending a webinar today. Um, in order to get more details of the free assessment, you would have to stay with us uh, right till the end where we'll share more details on how you could qualify for the assessment. So e-commerce. Now, an e-commerce website is essential for running an online business. I'm pretty sure something. this is something that everyone is familiar with. But it's equally important to have one you know, a, a website that has all features of an e-commerce to assure success. So a good e-commerce website will offer all the means to the customer and the merchant to help them get involved into a fruitful transaction. But when we speak about monetization, we don't only need to spend a certain amount of dollars on marketing. You know, we also, there are also different other ways that you could incorporate in order to boost your sales. So let's go ahead and discuss what are the important factors that make monetization a possibility? Because it's not only about spending money on marketing, but there are also certain ways that we're going to discuss now. The first and the most important is the app performance. Now, fancy features, a unique interface, compelling content. Now, these are great selling points for a mobile app, but app performance or functionality is just as important, if not more. While it not maybe, you know, it's something that people are not very convinced with, but it is definitely one of the biggest reasons why people download your app, and it could also be a reason why they would uninstall it. So an app that performs well, and, and, and it gives all types of experience to users across all devices, networks, you know, it's not buggy, it's not slow, and it's capable of completing the required actions, then that is the kind of app that has its place in today's world. App performance is important. Next, we have it has to be user friendly. Now, since we've mentioned performance, we also need to make sure that the app is user friendly. It's always easy speaking to someone who's friendly and accommodating. You know, in the real world, if you come across a grumpy face, it's difficult. You avoid speaking to those people, they're unapproachable. So, keeping that thought in mind, the website is a very representation of your business. And when it's speaking to your customers on your behalf, you need to make sure that it's speaking in the right tone, it has the right attitude, and that's what's important. So as a matter of fact, studies show that 76% of customers say the most important characteristics of the website is how easy it is to use. And that's the reason why it is really important 
And it's in fact, the key aspect is to be user friendly. Next on the list is high resolution photos and videos. Now gone are the days where you know you would post one photo or just a few bullet points and, and have your product sold. That doesn't happen anymore. Shoppers want to see multiple angles and people using the product in different environments. They want to be able to zoom into the picture, get a feel of the product. And that's the reason why having the right images or the right resolution is so important. Images also need to be um, optimized, all right? So images that load up or take a lot of time to load up is, is something that is really bad. And that's what uh, percentages say. There's a 39% of a drop rate if your images are too slow and they're not loading up in time, if they don't have the right resolution or the right kind of outcome that people are looking for. Next and important is user-generated reviews. Now, shoppers read reviews, all right? And about 95% of them do that. 95% of people read reviews and 57% of consumers will only use a business if they have four or more stars. So you might, that automatically gives you the thinking that good reviews are the only thing that are important. No, um, you could also have negative reviews because often when you have negative reviews, then is when users tend to understand that this is not a fake uh, you know, reviews or anything of that kind. Because when you have too many good reviews and people think that these are a fake, but when you have one or two you know, negative ones, then that does not create that much of a problem. Moving on, we have the special offers, deals, and promotions. Now, when shoppers realize they're getting a special deal, it motivates them to buy more and spend more time searching the site. So if e-commerce sites are using ongoing promotions, providing a unique web page that lists the offers, that would not only drive more sales, but it would also improve your SEO, which is an important factor. Next level e-commerce sites take the advantage of prime real estate headers and different ways of promoting different deals. And these are certain aspects that we'll definitely cover as we move down in the presentation. But yes, having the right placement, showing it the right way is a very important role because that's what keeps users hooked onto your application and your site. Another important aspect is the social proof. So brands and online sellers um, that connect with buyers on an emotional level um, you know, I would say they create a brand trust. That's the kind of brand trust that people are looking for. So when you have more social connections, when you're established on more social platforms, that's when it gives you the right authenticity that you need for your business. You know, it's the brands that engage with customers socially that create customers for life. You know, they're putting, they're offering products that help others and that people care about. That's what people care about. So social media allows e-commerce brands to show authenticity and associate an emotional connection with their products, which is important. Next, we have payment gateways. So a good way, a good e-commerce website gives you the option of integrating with diverse payment gateways, not by limiting your choices. So you could have as many payment gateways as possible, and that actually helps you sell to customers on a wider scale, having payment options like Stripe, PayPal, WorldPay, and as many as you could, that actually gives users the comfort that you have many options available. Now, when it comes down to this, there's an example of ShipRockets 360. You know, the kind of gateways that they have um, are really something that are expected, accepted by customers. Next, we have the order management. And a wholesale order management panel simplifies the task of merchants, where one can get detailed information regarding buyer cancellation, refunds, cash on delivery order verification, exchange order status update, and so much more. So this management panel is really important because it helps you understand everything that's happening on your application. And it needs to be robust enough to understand the requirements or what the customer is looking for and when they purchase the order. Next is security. Now this feature is also one of the most important as it, is, it ensures that no crucial data, such as the credit card information is, is, is saved. And for all prepaid shipments, uh, the checkout that's carried out throughout the secure payment gateway is all managed. The passwords are hashed and not stored in a readable format. The web pages should be protected by SSL. These are certain aspects that many websites tend not to cover because they don't think that the customers might think it to be important. But just like you would not be safe giving your card information to anyone, the website is the same thing. If you want users to put in their card information, make sure they feel safe by adding all these things. 
moving on, it has to be a scalable infrastructure. All right. So your, your hosting infrastructure should be able to scale as you get more and more traffic. A higher latency leads to drop in, in transaction rates and leads to loss of marketing dollars. All right. So you have to have an infrastructure that's scalable and that actually provides excellent uptime, ensuring that the website is readily available every way and at any time. Now, it goes without a say, but your e-commerce app has to be mobile compatible. Every great e-commerce site uses, you know, they usually offer three types of solutions for mobile compatibility. First, it is ensuring that the mobile view is responsive and properly accommodated according to the devices. The WAP is a mobile specific template which optimizes the website. And the APIs that you provide are essential since everyone now likes to browse via phones. So it is an important relevant feature for e-commerce websites to have mobile applications just so that users have uh, different options and different mediums to make purchases from you. Next, we have the shopping cart. And, and this is important too. The reason why I say that is if, if you've ever made a purchase online and, and, and you know sometimes shopping carts are not as friendly as you would want them to be. They give you problems and it's very difficult checking out. So you need to make sure that your shopping cart is easily available on the screen. Users can go back and forth with that in difficulties and everything is seamless, you know? So it's like easily and smoothly moving through the, the website or the application from the shopping cart and making those purchases. It's really important. One of the most important right now is um, the, shop, the shopping cart abandonment rate. And, and, and right now, the abandoned rate for shopping carts is approximately 68%. Now, have you ever wondered what your online sales would look like if we managed to bring that rate down? And it is important because it, it, you have to have a strategy in place to make sure that any customer that comes to the shopping cart makes a purchase. Now for that, Royal Cyber has its very own chatbot. And the main goal of this chatbot is to combat cart abandonment. Now it works really great. So if anyone's trying to use an expired coupon, the bot will immediately intervene and give them a new coupon. You know, it's always great extending a sale for maybe a day or two, as long as you're getting a customer that might stick along for a long time. At the same time, the bot will also go ahead and find out if anyone's facing any difficulties placing the order. It'll go ahead and ask them questions if there's anything that they could assist with. So it's a pretty com customizable bot and it actually allows you to get in touch with your customers quickly, get responses quickly to them. And if anyone needs additional help, then the bot will also fetch you actual help by getting an, a human involved. Next, we have the easy to check out. So one of the best things that online shopping is um, it's, it's not having to wait in a long line or, um, you know, because that actually frustrate shoppers. The reason why they come to your online application is because they don't want to get to the store, they don't want to wait in line, and they don't want to deal with the cashier that is actually taking a lot of time, um, you know, completing those bills. And now in order to make sure that you have the best checkout, because if you're, if you're, if they're not coming to your store and if they're looking to get a fast experience through the online, you need to make sure that your checkout is apt enough to, to, to provide them with service really quickly. Now, a few things that you need to keep in mind when your um, your customers are coming to your website for a checkout, you first need to make sure that you keep the checkout process short and the forms even shorter. You have to have a self-contained checkout process, all right, so that once the um, customer has picked the items, you know, you, you it's it's time for conversion. So you, you literally go ahead and take out everything possible from the direction or from the, in order to distract, not to distract the user. When a user gets to that point, you don't want to distract them with anything. So you take out anything from their way and, and have them go ahead and check out. Death is uh, to compulsory. And, and that is if, if there's one thing that pushes a user quicker down the abandonment shopping cart highway, it is a compulsory registration process. So don't do that. It's not important that users have to fill out long forms in order to get what they want. They don't need to register. You need to keep the process as simple as possible. And that's what successful websites do. You could easily sign up with Facebook, with your, with your Google account, and so on and so forth. You have to make it very easy for them so that nothing is compulsory. They can easily place an order and they can get out there as soon as possible. Next, we have the cross sell and upsell. 
So before the customer proceeds to pay for the item, it's also a good idea to show them products that would complement, you know, items that will complement. So if you if you purchased um, a jeans, you would want to show them, a, you know, a shirt that goes along with that and so on and so forth. This is one of the best ways that, you know, you could sell in more products and have a bigger card shown to your customers. And last but not the least, the one mistake that many people do is they add surprise charges. Now, I myself personally have walked out of carts when I look at a product for a certain price and it ends up being another price. You know, you add in delivery, tax, and so on and so forth. These are charges that customers are not willing to pay for. I wouldn't want to pay for it, so I cannot expect my customers to pay for it. Make sure that when you're putting up a price, you have all the details in there. It has to have the final price, and when the customer reaches to the final part, that price should not change. It should remain the same. You also need to analyze data correctly. So information that comes from sites with reference to what users choose what products, um, how many users with it during what time of the day, and so on and so forth. All this information needs to be analyzed very correctly because there's a lot of information that comes through the panels. But if this information is not analyzed, then it's literally of no use. So you need to make sure that whatever information comes, your application or your panel is smart enough to break it down for you. Your application or your panel needs to tell you that these these amount of people, you know, purchase something like this. Um, we are getting more sales from from a certain geography, and we're getting um, you know more sales during certain time of the day. All this information needs to be broken down for you. You don't have to go about personally looking for that information. You need to have all that information ready to use. And this is something that we could always help you out with. That's because we have artificial intelligence capabilities and different softwares that can break down the information for you and provide you better results to make better decisions. And last but not the least, it's the user experience. Um, it is by far the most important, and that is something that you may have seen across many different websites. And it goes without a say that just like the first impression is the last impression, so has the designs to be. You know, in order for your design to be correct and be perfect, we're going to spend another five to 10 minutes where our UI UX expert, that is Shiva Yogi, he's going to walk you through this. He's going to give you all the knowledge he has in this field and what it takes in order to make your application successful through the design experience point of view. So over to you, Shiva. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Shiva. Let me walk you through the UX trends, which helps e-commerce monetization. Taking you to the slides where I'm talking about my first foremost trend in the e-commerce, that is Uber Commerce. Uber Commerce, you might have heard Uberization also. The both are same. So a couple of days back, I had a discussion with one of the CTO who has a big billion dollar e-commerce company into building materials. She was keen on bringing this concept under their business. I just spoke to them. I asked why you want to bring Uberization within your business. She mentioned it is the power to the users. It's very much engaging. It increases the brand value and it gives an instant engagement, instant services to the user. Because when the user book a coffee or any food item or anything, so it will give in a timeline like another 20 minutes and all where i got uh, you might have aware like amazon is spending lots of money on researching on the drone deliveries if it is start working on the drone delivery so instantly we we will start giving the services so any e-commerce company they can give services on the instant basis might be in 20 minutes 30 minutes time so that's a bigger engagement and the uberization gives them a real-time experience i can track i can modify i can delete 
or I can add more products to it. That's where they say it's a power to the users. Okay. So I'm moving to the next slide where I talk about the another bigger e-commerce trend that is a voice commerce. You see, when you compare to any other commerce, voice commerce don't have any interface, but it's really highly contextual. So it gives a personalized experience. It's a time efficient. It's a smart way of shopping. And I told it's a low boost, high engagement. So bigger thing on the experience side, there are no language barriers and there are no issues with the tech savviness. Anybody can use any atmosphere they can use, only they can avoid some noisy areas, but still it's going to be a bigger winner in the e-commerce area because the old age people to engage, anybody can use, even kids can use it. That's the power of voice commerce. Moving to the next slide, where I'm talking about the combined activities related to voice search. Users have used while cooking, while multitasking, while watching a TV, while in a bed, while in a walking, while in driving. That should be avoided. You can see that there is a standalone speaker, there is a mobile. You can see the percentage over there. While cooking, 65% they use other devices, 37% they use a mobile. On the purchase made on a voice search, that's a bigger thing. Food is the major area which is bought through voice search and travel reservation is the least. Travel reservation require a lot more information, that may be the reason. And still they can focus more on providing the ease of using voice commerce. Moving to the next slide where I'm talking about the another trend that is AR commerce. It is called as a new gen online shopping experience. It can turbocharge customer engagement, increase the conversation rates. It's a new solution for a new gen customers. It's a real time experience. It gives a pro 360 degree of the product with the fitment things. You can see the product is fit on the area where they want to place it. It gives an clear idea of like how the product is going to look in the particular area. So there are predictions from Gartner like so 20 to 30 percent of air commerce is going to be a big shopping. It may increase uh, revenues to 2x to 3x level because wherever possible if we implement air commerce that easily increase the conversation because it giving the that level of value. Moving to the next slide where you can see there is a video which talk about the new gen shopping experience. I just play for it. You can see the way simplest way of doing shopping here. It gives a detailed experience. This is the best example. It eases your shopping experience. So moving to the next slide where I'm talking about another bigger e-commerce trend in the UX is Instagram commerce. So most of the mobile users spend their highest time on social platforms and the Instagram is one of them. Where Instagram has bought this concept of Instagram commerce where the brand images can be clicked. If you can see that there is a t-shirt, they can click on the Nike t-shirt. Nike, you can see the Nike branding also in the top, that related image. And clicking of the particular product, it gives a basic information of it. Activity of that particular 
experience and gives a price value. It is called as a tagging of the product details. On click of that, it gives a basic product details. By clicking on that, they can buy that product within Instagram. That is a big level here because you don't have to go to other platforms where you can buy. It is not redirecting anywhere. That is a bigger thing because you are not losing any trust values here. You are in Instagram. You, you can securely buy the products. Secure way of doing your shopping. That is a big thing in the Instagram commerce. So that's it from the UX uh, trends slides. So I'm hand over it to Victor. Victor, over to you. Thank you, Shiva, for those insights on design. Now, we've discussed everything that we think and we know are is important for an e-commerce site. But let's go ahead and take a look at what our customers actually want and how do we provide them an experience where a customer comes back for more. Now, we will be reinstating certain points, but it's important to understand. And this is something that we've gathered through a recent survey that we ran with customers. And many of them came back asking for information or telling us that these are the things that they'll look at when they get to a website. So what are those things? Without a doubt, the first thing that they think about is design. And even though we've shared the importance of design, but let's go ahead and see what did they think. Now, when we asked them, um, how do they want the website to be? You know, they came back saying that it has to look good. It has to give the right impression. And it's rightly so uh, because have you ever actually walked into a store that is disorganized? It smells and it's very uninviting. You know, on the other hand, have you ever walked into a store that is clean, spacious and has a very comforting feel such as the Apple store? Now, both of them are in there to do business. That's definite. There's no reason. But the one that gives you a better impression, that's the one that you move forward with because those are the companies that care about their appearance and they're definitely going to be caring about the customers. So look at your e-commerce site as a physical store. And that's the reason why design matters. A good design, having the right components in the right place, displaying the right things by showing more, explaining little, and having every part signified is, is what makes a customer come back for more. So it's important that when a customer visits, you know, they're saying wow in a good way. And it still needs to work. So do not cut corners on design. Every pixel, every picture, and every word matters. Hire a good designer. And if you can afford it, then just make sure that you're getting the job done right on priority. Next, customers want its speed. All right, so no one has time on their hand. Everyone's busy and everyone wants something that's quick. So when you visit a, no a speedy website, it is noticeable. That's because pages take less time to load it's easy. The information is delivered quicker. Customers can easily find whatever they want really within the snap of their finger. So in order to deliver, um, you know, a good feeling for the customers, you need to make sure that it's fast and quick. Next and very important is the product selection. Now, obviously, you know, most startups, they cannot afford to have too many products like Amazon and Zappos. Um, however, having too many choices at times can actually be bad as well. So don't think that if you don't have an enormous selection, you are not going to be able to sell. You know, sometimes limiting your section selection actually allows customers to quickly find what they're looking for. Um, you know, it keeps ha letting customers, you know, not keeping them away from des decision paralysis. It also increases conversions by naturally limiting the number of clicks to checkout. So in order to have a good checkout in order to have your customers purchase more, make sure that your product selection is easily available to them. There's easy search options and they can find any product that they're looking for easily within your inventory. Now, product pages also make a huge important, um, uh, you know, it, they play a very important role. And um, I could explain that by saying, if you actually had maybe 10 seconds to sell a product, um, your all, audience already knows a little about it. They understand the category, um, the product fits under, the makers of the product, but that's all that they know. 
and you just have 10 seconds to pitch this to them, how would you do it? What would you tell them? That's what your product has to do. It has 10 seconds for a user's attention and it has to share the right day information at, with, within the right space to make them purchase. There was one website that I actually came across which um, actually had a banner where um, it had one fold banner and that they had the relevant information about the product, the price, and everything that they needed. You know, other companies also use methods of videos and um, you know small snippets just to make sure that customers get the right information within a quick 10 second time and then they can make their purchase without any difficulties. And last upon the list, and this is something that many people don't do. So after the transaction is completed, you need to make sure that you provide a quick receipt to your customer by the email. You also need to make sure that the receipt contains important information such as the order number, the contents of the customer's order, um, an email, a phone number, you know, in case they need to reach out to you for anything, you have to make yourself available, an email and a phone number. And these are for customers, these are for businesses that want their customers to stay a long time, not for people that just want to sell this, their products one time and that's about it. But you need to have information where they can get back to you, where they can contact you. You could also throw in a few social media links to make sure that they can contact your business whenever they need. Now, once that is done, you need to make sure that you know um, you also include links to your website. So this is really important and many people don't understand that, but if you include a link back to your website, that's when the customers, some of them are definitely gonna come back and purchase more. And if they want to purchase something, you know, purchase something in the future, it's easy for them to come back. So you need to have a sense of uh, sending them a, an email with all the information to come back, but also you need to send them information such as different products and different promotions, not flooding up their emails, but reaching out to them once in a while, letting them know or asking them about their experience with you and giving them options or maybe a coupon or maybe a discount to come back and search for more. And these are really important. So moving on next, we're gonna be, um, I'm gonna have the controls handed over to Samson, who's actually gonna discuss the case study that we have for one of our clients, which was a great success. Um, and, and Samson, over to you. Thank you, Victor. And warm welcome to all of you who have joined us for this webinar today. So we have a success story of one of our clients, Augusta Sportswear. The company was founded with three employees in uh, 1977 and has grown into one of the leading sports apparel manufacturers in the U.S with more than 800 styles, ranging from blank team uniform to corporate apparel, Augusta Sportswear brand serves individual sportswear fans and uh, corporations across the country. So what were the business challenges? One of the business challenge was consolidation Augusta Sportswear was struggling to consolidate the four brand products, its warehouse and its fulfillment center process in a single website. The second uh, challenge was performance. The client did not want any downtime or slow slide performance and wanted to move their data center to cloud. The third business challenge was seamless experience. To nurture customer loyalty and attract incremental sales, Augusta Sportswear brands wanted to offer a seamless, consistent experience when online customers shop shopped any of its uh, apparel brands. And the fourth challenge uh, was user experience. The company simply wanted to provide a superior and a better user experience than it was currently providing. And after months of hard work, um, we finally achieved 4% increase in online conversions, 5% increase in sales through the digital channels, fast and seamless upgrade, a robust architecture of the commerce solution played a vital role uh, without any downtime. A single storefront 
for their brands and a shared shopping cart, reduction in backend processing, a great user experience, a new selling point using CSR functionality to capture a potential sales on behalf of a customer. And needless to say um, that Augusta Sportswear was, uh, was very happy with the results and their senior director of digital experience, Nathan Maxwell, uh, gave a wonderful feedback for the work that we, that we did. Thank you. Back to you, Victor. Thank you, Samson. And as promised at the start of this webinar, we actually have an option for a free assessment, and that is applicable for everyone who's registered with this webinar. Um, it's actually gonna be a one week assessment for your website and your mobile app. At the end of the one week, we'll share our report with an analysis of our suggestions and our feedback. It's, it's gonna be a detailed report that's gonna have a lot of information as to what your e-commerce website or app could do in order to engage more users and get better sales. And we could also point out a few design flags that your business may be um, you know, doing wrong and, and something that can be corrected. So in order to get the assessment, anyone who's interested, you could either leave us a message um, in the chat box that's on the right side of the pane, or you could send us an email at info at royalcyber.com. Make sure to have the subject line as webinar on e-commerce monetization. So just refer back to this webinar just so that we know, um, you know where these requests are coming from. 